Alright everybody, welcome to First Attack. I am James Chen, how's everybody going? Uh, here we are at on Ultra Chen TV here on Mondays. Of course, uh, Level 3 Focus will be following up. Sorry about the technical difficulty starting up. There was a little bit of sound desync uh, on the last attempt I tried. Let me know if it's looking better right now. It's just as bad? Wow. Huh. That's really odd, because I'm not doing anything different right now. I'm going... I mean, at this point in time, I wonder if it's just the Twitch servers or something like that. Probably too many people trying to stream Call of Duty right now. Um, the interesting thing about it was, I know I was talking with uh, Armando at Wednesday Night Fights, I think it was, last uh, two weeks ago. And he was just saying how bad it's been recently that, you know, he was having trouble getting it to stream. It was, like, super laggy and such as well. Yeah, Beefy Tech is seeing this right now. So, um, sorry guys, I'm, I, I, we're going to have to sync it up a little bit more when the YouTube video comes out. For now, I'm just going to have to look like a really bad kung fu movie. I'm sure it's appropriate for me to be in a bad kung fu movie, so... You have defeated my master! I will kill you now! Anyways, um, so here we go. Okay. So today, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is uh, the uppercut. Um, I've decided to kind of try to go through different classes of moves because a lot of characters, as different as they are, they have very similar uh, move archetypes, is a good way to put it. And the uppercut, I would probably say, especially in Street Fighter, not so much in games like Marvel, not so much in a lot of other games, but in Street Fighter and probably in Cross Tekken, the uppercut is pretty much the most important move in the game. It's, it's going to affect the match the most. Now, um... Obviously, when I say the uppercut, I don't necessarily mean just Ken and Ryu's and Akuma's uppercut and such like that. But, uh, you know what? Let's just get into the slides here. Once again, welcome back to the... Uh, you are now back in a ultra uh, first attack class here. So let me get this going here. And... Yeah, there we go. Here we go. We have classes in session now. So here we go. So here are the... Uh, oh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, we have not gotten the, uh, the the faces yet, the, the 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 new emotes for myself and David just yet. We will do that soon, hopefully. But uh, here we go. So let's talk about the uppercut here, and uh, what exactly it is. I mean, uppercut. You've probably heard it referred to as many different terms. A lot of times, people use generic names for it. Uh, for example, they'll use the term DP, they'll use the r r uh, term wake-ups, uh, reversals, and uh, David's favorite, get-off-me attacks, you know, which is uh, actually a really good name for it. It's actually probably the most accurately described name here. It's just probably the most awkward one there is, but it, it is the most appropriate description of what an uppercut really comes down to be. And... To be honest with you, the reason why I say that uppercuts are so important in this game, and you know, uppercut is a really bad generic term, but you know what? That's what everybody always talks, kind of describes it as. Usually, like, if a, if a character doesn't have an uppercut, the comment is, they really need to give my character an uppercut, you know, even if it's not an uppercut, so. But here we go. So, um, again, it's probably the most powerful uh, class of move in the game. And why is it? And why is it so powerful? Well, um, really, it comes down to the fact that uppercuts are defined by um, really fast moves with a lot of in invincibility frames. So as a result, you end up you having this uppercut, which has just a ton of uses, right? You can use it as an anti-air. You can use it as wake-up attacks for when you get knocked down and when you get up. You know, if someone jumps at you, you can uppercut them out of the air, get them away from you. If someone's trying to pressure you when you get up, you do a wake-up uppercut and, you know, again, get off me move. Um, if someone tries to kick you, you know, you've all seen, like, uppercutting Guile's limb or something, like Guile throws out a low forward and you uppercut it, or, or someone tries to stick out a stand roundhouse with eight on or something like that and you uppercut the stand roundhouse. And um, 
Also, they're really good for very, very basic frame traps that you just walk up in front of somebody's face and kind of dance around and then just uppercut them all of a sudden. Uh, all these things I'll get into in a little bit more detail later on. So again, um, what is it about uppercuts that make them so powerful? Um, honestly, it, it all comes down to the invincibility. That is the number one thing that makes uppercuts super useful and uh, makes it so that people rely on them so much. Because they have invincibility, I would probably say the majority of the moves in the game do not have invincibility. Almost no normal move has any form of invincibility at all. In fact, I don't think there is a normal move that has any invincibility. Most special moves have zero invincibility. Only a few EX special moves have invincibility. But for the most part, uppercuts have a decent amount of invincibility. And what this means is they cannot be hit. They cannot be thrown. So for the first few frames, and this is invincibility from the very first frame it's activated. So in the situations where I talked about, for example, uh, wake-ups, it's really good because you go from being invincible lying on the ground to instantly doing your uppercut. So you go from invincible to invincible. So even if an enemy's move is in there, uh, it's not going to hit you. You go from invincible to invincible and eventually the uppercut is going to hit you. And um, this just makes it the perfect um, move to... It's pretty much the answer for everything when you think about it. You know, if the opponent tries to jump on you, what do you do? Uppercut. If the opponent tries to kick you, what do you do? You uppercut. Uh, if the opponent tries to throw you, what do you do? You can uppercut him. Basically, a good way to almost think about it is it's a manually attacking parry, you know, because it stops a lot of things, you know. It stops almost every attack because of these invincibility frames. Now, keep in mind how potent that is to have a move with invincibility. Um, you can just blow through everything. You could blow through anything. If your uppercut was literally just a button press, you could pretty much just walk around and whenever the opponent touches a button, you just hit your button, you'd uppercut them all day. That's how powerful it is when you really think about it and how almost overpowered uppercut moves are. Fortunately, through years of game design and uh, experience, they've learned to balance these things out. But um, another thing that makes uppercuts really good is the fact that most of them are extremely fast to come out. For example, Ryu and Ken's uppercut come out in three frames, or at least certain versions of their uppercuts come out in three frames. Uh, most uppercuts come out in about four or five frames. And honestly, for a move that has invincibility at the beginning, being able to come out that fast, being able to hit things so quickly, that is one of the things that makes uppercuts so potent. Um, you do have some moves that are very, very slower, like much slower uppercuts. Uh, Cody's EX Zonk Knuckle, for example, has invincibility when it starts up. Takes a little bit longer to hit. Um, moves like Balrog's Headbutt, also uh, considered an uppercut class move, has a lot more startup than most uppercuts. So there's definitely a lot more weaknesses to them. But in general, um, most uppercuts attack very quickly. And so you've got invincibility and you've got speed, which pretty much makes them... The, I mean, honestly, it feels like they're overpowered. So the question is, what is it about uppercuts that makes them so they're not overpowered? Well, honestly, most uppercuts have a very limited range. When you do an uppercut, actually, let's just let's just show this. Uh, I should probably do some more game demos for you guys here. So let's take this away. Let's do this and let's do this. Here we go. Do, do, do. Okay, so now we are in here. So, let me go to training mode for you guys. So obviously, um, things that make moves good are speed, priority, range, uh, recovery. Those are some really good examples of what make moves really good. And... Um, Basically, if you have all four of those things, the move is too powerful. 
And so the advantage, obviously, that the uppercut has is the speed and the priority. However, the range is not so good. So, for example, if I'm playing footsies here and I want to hit Ken, I can hit him with low forwards like this. But the problem is, if I get into that range and uppercut, you can see I'm not going to hit him. In fact, look how close I can be right here, and I'm not going to hit him. This is within range of a crouch short, and I cannot uppercut him. So this is, for the most part, one of the biggest weaknesses. Obviously, if I do a higher strength uppercut, I gain a little bit of horizontal distance, but really... Not that much, right? So, like one back dash maybe? No, one back dash is not good enough. But if I do low strong one back up, one back dash, I'm not going to hit. One low strong back dash, fierce uppercut's not going to hit. Whereas one low strong back dash, I can hit him with a low roundhouse. One low strong back dash. Oh, I just missed with a low forward, but if Ken was crouching, I'd probably hit him with it. I could hit him with a stand roundhouse and such like that. And, of course, you know, I could also do, you know, fireball, which is pretty much like the, 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 the example of range. So one of the biggest weaknesses of uppercuts is that they're really it really does not hit a lot of characters very well. Obviously, this is going to vary from character to character. For example, ES Messiah Kick has better range. Uh, EX Headbutt from Honda has better range. But in general, most uppercut class moves have very bad horizontal range. The other thing that makes it so that they are pretty fair is that they are super punishable. So... Um, if I decide to get my opponent to whiff an uppercut, oops, like so, I can easily punish it with something, right? I can do that, I can do, you know, that, and if I really wanted to, I could probably do like some crazy, you know, like this, right? So uppercuts are super punishable, way more so nowadays than they were, um, in the older games. In the Street Fighter 2 days, God, uppercuts were so hard to punish. I mean, like Ken jab uppercut, Sagat jab uppercut, you can block those and sometimes you couldn't hit them. And even when Ken did a whiff jab uppercut, it was hard to punish a lot of the times. So uh, again, everybody, uh, apologies for those who just tuned in. Yes, the audio and the video is lagging. I do believe this is a Twitch problem. I do not think that this is a problem with... Uh, with the, with the streaming setup I have right now. Again, we'll have this fixed uh, once we get this on YouTube. The last weakness of uppercuts, honestly, is that because uppercuts are so important in the game, because they are so prominent, because they are so important to gameplay, uppercuts are the number one tool that has had technology developed against it. That and maybe fireballs. But uppercuts, the, the, the amount of work people have put into figuring out how to counter uppercuts and figuring out ways to punish uppercuts is tremendous. And we'll see that once we get towards the end of this, uh, this episode because I have a whole list of ways that you can punish uppercuts. And it, it's really ridiculously extensive uh, on how to punish these things. So, obviously, you know, I've mentioned already that there are a lot of different kinds of uppercuts, right? The ma Ooh, look at the order of this. That's awesome. Okay, well, sorry, my slides are a little out of order here. But, obviously, the most uh, important one is the traditional uppercut. This is the Ryu Ken uh, Goken um, Akuma kind of uppercuts. These are the uh, Dan kind of uppercuts. These are the Kami uppercuts, the Fei Long uppercuts. And um, what, 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 why are these uppercuts so powerful? Because you don't need a charge time. You could do them at any point in time. As long as I'm just walking around back and forth, you know, it's just really good that I can just sit here and walk back and forth. And any time I feel like it, I can uppercut my enemy, right? Or if he does, for example, um, you know, a stand roundhouse like this. You know, if I predict the stand roundhouse, I can, oops, if I predict the stand roundhouse, I can uppercut it, right? Now, obviously, uh, certain uppercuts have more invincibility than others, like, so I can strong uppercut it and such like that. But it's really nice that I can walk around and play a footsie game, and then at any point in time, if I felt like it, I can uppercut. So that's one of the best things about a traditional uppercut. 
Uh, w- probably the biggest weakness of uh, traditional uppercuts. Uh, the biggest weakness of a traditional uppercut is the fact that players can get caught off guard. And what do I mean by that? Well, even though you can do them at any time, it still takes a motion towards down and down forward. And I don't think Capcom was really aware of the fact that when they first created Street Fighter, how crucial this motion turned out to be. But in my opinion, I think it's the perfect motion that they could have chosen for an uppercut. Because what it does is it creates this weird like timing issue with it. People, and this happens to everybody except for the best players, people have a tendency to be scared to try to uppercut because it's not as fluid as a fireball motion or as fluid as a quarter circle back motion. Because it is such an awkward motion, you will actually see situations where a player will jump at a character like Kami, like Ryu, like five times in a game and the opponent does not uppercut them. Even though they've got this great anti-air move that's invincible and they can do it at any point in time, you jump and you're not ready for the jump and you're just like, oh my god, I need to block because I can't get the uppercut out in time. So there are definitely problems with the uh, with traditional uppercuts. That is probably their greatest weakness is that they have this pseudo, you know, kind of weirdly awkward motion. Now, once you become a very strong player, that fear kind of disappears from you and you're willing to try to uppercut and you learn to react a little bit faster. But for the most part, when you uppercut people out of the air, a lot of it is anticipation. I will see top players get caught off guard by jumps, even though they have an uppercut. It happens to everybody. And uh, you can't get mad at yourself if it does happen, if someone jumps at you. Just, you know, learn to anticipate the jumps a lot more. And um, another type of uh, uppercut, probably the second most common type of uppercut, is the flash kick, named for Guile's flash kick. Now, um, these are obviously charge moves, charge straight down, up, and kick or up and punch, whatever it happens to be. Some characters, it might even be a sonic boom uh, command. Now, what makes these so good is that they are so easy to react with. As I mentioned, you can catch regular uppercuts off guard uh, when you jump at somebody out of nowhere. I would probably say even the most basic player will be able to flash kick you 90 to 95% of the time, no matter how much you catch him by surprise when you jump at him. Why? Because the motion is just simply boom, boom. It's just like a, you don't even have to think about it. It's just while you're holding down, up and kick. Or if you're on a pad, up and kick. Like, you can do the motion literally in one frame. Because you're already charged, so the command is up and a button. One frame, you can do that. Whereas an uppercut at least requires three frames towards, down, down, forward, and a button. So that is one of the things that makes flash kicks so potent, is that they're so quick to react with. You can flash kick a lot more things. Like if I'm sitting half a screen away and Honda headbutts me, I can flash kick that on reaction if I wanted to. Um, Whereas with an uppercut, I might not be able to do so because of the motion. So that's actually a really, really one of the best things about flash kicks. And of course, the downside is that you have to charge so you're stuck in place. So whereas I said that the best thing about a traditional uppercut is you can walk around and play footsies and get an uppercut, flash kicks are the opposite. And uh, so again, flash kicks count as such like as Guile's flash kick, um, DJ's up kicks as they call them, um, you know, Honda's EX headbutt, uh, Blanca's vertical ball, especially the EX version in this game. Balrog's headbutt is another flash kick, so a lot of flash kick style moves here. And of course there's a bunch of other kind of flash kicks. For example, there's Zangief Lariat. I'm sorry, not a lot other kind of flash kicks, but other kind of uppercuts. You know, Zangief's Lariat is an anti-air. And you know, I called Honda's EX headbutt a flash kick, but really it's kind of different than a lot of uppercuts. Because remember how I talked about One of the things that makes uppercuts um, weak is that they're very punishable. Uh, Honda's EX headbutt is not very punishable at all. And it's one of the things that makes it such a powerful move is that even if you block it, it's really hard to hit him back. 
and it makes it a really potent, potent move. Um, EX Messiah Kick, again, another great example of, uh, of an alternate kind of uh, uppercut move uppercut move. It has the invincibility when it comes out, but it goes forward and it has follow-ups and all sorts of things like that. Another move that's very difficult to punish on blocked. But a lot of these moves have their own weakness. Uh, if you notice the two examples I gave, the EX Headbutt and the EX Messiah Kick cost meter. So obviously these are not resources that you're going to have on you all the time. But um, these are just uh, examples of other kinds of uppercut moves. So, um, before I go move on, and yes, I do look at the chat, but um, unfortunately I can't see a lot of the chat because it's blocked by my uh, PowerPoint slides. But uh, before I move on to the next section, I am going to go to break. So I'm going to read the chat uh, right now as I'm in during the commercial. So uh, if you guys do have questions, please type them out in the stream chat uh, during this break. So I will be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody, to First Attack. Uh, how is the game volume going? Uh, I have the game volume turned down a little bit. Everybody was saying it was a little bit loud. Um, it's probably almost inaudible right now. Um, okay, so today I'm talking about uppercuts. Again, for those people who are joining, I do believe the Twitch servers are a little screwy today, and so um, the sound is very desynced, and I apologize about that. Hopefully, I will get that taken care of. I mean, hopefully, we'll get that taken care of before we do the YouTube videos, so that should be good then. All right, so here we go. Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit more about uppercuts, and specifically the traditional uppercut. Even though that there are a lot of flash kicks and all sorts of kind of uh, alternate uppercuts, I would probably say the traditional uppercuts are the, are the most uh, important moves in the game because they, they craft the way a round goes. They craft a game so much, especially in longer sets. When you play a one-player game, and um, I'll talk a little bit more about the, the, what uppercuts do to the games. I'll expand on this a little bit more. The thing about uppercuts, honestly, is that they define so much of how the game is going to go. If you play a, a person in one game, like we do online when we play online, which the ranked matches are just one game... Uh, you are going to get beat up by uppercuts really bad. You're going to have people who mash uppercuts, and they are going to beat you, and you're going to be mad because you're, you're like, I'm a better player. I should not be losing to this stuff. But it is going to happen because um, uppercuts are, are so indicative of a person's personality, and a lot of times it's probably one of the number one things that top players read when they play a person that they've never played before. The first game they could lose or look very human because all they're doing is testing when the opponent is willing to uppercut, how good their anti-air reaction is. So they'll try to jump at him by surprise. And if they get uppercut out of the air, they're like, okay, he's good at this. Or they'll try to do like a staggered block string, and if the guy mashes an uppercut out in the middle of it, then you're just like, okay, uh, he's going to mash uppercut. So uh, I will keep this in mind for later on. So... The traditional uppercut is probably one of the most uh, important moves in the game because a lot of it is going to be in there. Wow, okay. All my slides are messed up right now. This is probably going to happen for all, throughout the whole entire thing. I apologize. I should have tested them before I started. But let's just talk about the very basics. Performing an uppercut. How do you do an uppercut? Well, very simple. The traditional uppercut Oops, that's not the right controller. This is the right joystick. Okay, the traditional uppercut. Take a look at the Take a look at the top left corner here. Actually, let me do something here. This will be cool. Um, which one is this one? This is game right large. Uh, let's do this here. Pip settings. Uh, can I not do this? Why is this not? Why is this not letting me allowed to do this? Oh, okay, I guess not. Well, look right under my name. You can see the the motions right over there, right? So obviously, to do an uppercut, it's forward, then down, and down forward, 
and then an attack button. Most characters, it's going to be a punch button. A lot of characters, it's a kick button, such as Kami and Fei Long. But if you do this as fast as possible, you end up with an uppercut. So, um, it's actually very hard to do a clean motion uh, to have it perfected, but that's one of the good things about an uppercut. You can do all sorts of crazy motions and have it come out. And uh, that's what makes it very useful. In fact, um, a lot of the times I purposely don't do the traditional forward, down, down, forward, and punch. You know, um, interestingly enough here, let me change myself to a large screen here because I want you to be able to see me here. Um, there we go. One of the temptations to do, I'm going to have to do this mirror image, right? Yeah. So one of the temptations to do uh, uppercuts is just to go from forward, roll the controller to down, and then roll the controller to down forward. So you're basically rubbing the joystick or the control pad on the edge of the controller. And um, one of the things that has helped me very early on, and a lot of players, is to learn to think of an uppercut rather than, you know, a, a weird wonky kind of rotation on the actual edge of the controller, but to think of an uppercut as a mini circle. So in other words, you start with the controller... Sorry, that's not static, that's David. Um, <laughs> So um, the, what happens is that you hold the controller towards, and instead of doing this, you do this. So think of it as a little tiny circle when you do an uppercut. It's a really good way to think about doing it, and it, it allows for a quicker input of the uppercut. So instead of, so let me, I don't know if you guys can see this clearly or not on the controller here, but instead of doing, holding forward and doing this, like that, I actually kind of do a little circle. Uh, you can't see that on this. You know what I need? I need to like build myself a giant joystick just so I can like show you guys. But um, it's much easier. You can get it much faster that way. I mean, both ways work. If you're good at you know going against the edge, feel free. Uh, don't make me stop you from doing that, okay? But um, for the most part, a lot of people have gotten better from doing uh, little circle motions. And uh, you'll see that that also helps later on in combos as well. <clears throat> so, but again, you can do all sorts of craziness in the motion. Like, I can just do whatever. Like, what did I do? I did forward to back to... So I did like forward to almost a full half circle and it still comes out as an uppercut. Oh, and another thing that I, I should probably uh, tell people... When you want to do an uppercut, it actually really helps to, to very consciously end your controller at down forward. This, prob this is the reason why this is uh, to do this is because if you do not end the controller at down forward, you may come out with fireballs accidentally from time to time. But if you consciously make sure you're holding down forward at the end of an uppercut, the chances of you getting an uppercut out properly are much higher. Okay, so make sure you end the controller at down forward, whether you're on pad or you're on joystick. If you do the end part too messy, that's what comes out, is a fireball instead. Again, everybody, uh, this is very desynced, so apologies to everyone watching this. And okay. So uh, what are some of the weaknesses of this uppercut? Like, what are, what are some of the problems with the fact that traditional uppercuts have this motion? Uh, I talked about it. Uh, I think it's the perfect motion ever designed because it's really just hard to do while you're like walking backwards and someone jumps at you and you try to uppercut them. Look at that. See, I just messed up right there. And I, and I actually honestly tried to. But it's a lot harder because it takes a little bit longer to get to towards and then do this uppercut motion. If I'm having to be crouch shorting and someone jumps at me, you know, it, it, there's like this weird delay to it. Like if I'm standing here, I can uppercut really fast. But if I'm crouching and then someone jumps at me all of a sudden, like it's harder to uppercut in a quick timing. So that is why you can catch a lot of people off guard. That's why you can jump at them and have them go, oh my gosh, I'm going to block even though I have this anti-air that will beat 100% of jump attacks that come at me, you know. Um, another problem, and I need to put in the caveat that this doesn't necessarily 
This is not necessarily a problem in Street Fighter 4 or Cross Tekken. But uh, let me just show you what I mean. Uh, oh, I didn't go to the game or I didn't go to the slides. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um, sorry, guys. Oh, man, that sucks. There you go. Okay. Well, hopefully a lot of things that I've been talking about make sense over there. So let me switch over to the game. Sorry, guys. Um, this is why I need a stream producer. Uh, so I need the game large here. Don't need this. I want this. I don't need this. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Um, so one of the problems with it, it does for standing. And um, this is not necessarily a problem in Street Fighter 4. But here, I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm Ken and I just did three low shorts in a row, right? So if I play back like this. So in other words, if I'm blocking this and I try to uppercut it and I accidentally stand up. Whoops. Wow. I just came out with a super. Good job. I will get hit. You see that? Even though he's still crouching, that's, that's, that's a Street Fighter 4 problem. I'm technically standing up, but because I'm in the standing animation when I get hit, I still crouch. So sometimes if you try to mash an uppercut out in the middle of a true block string like this, you end up getting hit. And now I'm going to super him in the face again. Bwahaha. Okay. And then uh, obviously one of the last biggest problems with it is that it does require to have a specific facing direction. So if someone jumps over you, uh, they can kind of mess up your uppercut code. So if I do, for example, this, right, and I do a playback, if I try to do an uppercut when he jumps over me, it messes up my code. This does not happen with flash kicks. You know, you are not going to have this problem with flash kicks. It's just down and up. So no matter what, you're going to get a flash kick no matter what side that they end up switching on. You'll actually find out that this is a huge problem because of one of the ways that you can counter uppercuts. Okay. Now, of course, uh, as a lot of people were mentioning in the chat, um, another one of the things about uppercuts, especially in Street Fighter 4, is the code shortcuts. And the code shortcuts change a lot in Street Fighter 4. And uh, I don't want to spend too much time talking about them. I mean, I don't want to put too much focus on them. Because honestly, uh, they don't work in a lot of other games. You're not going to be able to do shortcuts in KOF. You're not going to be able to do it in Third Strike. You're not going to be able to do it in Dark Darkstalkers. You're not going to be able to do it in um, Persona. Well, Persona games have no DP motions, actually. Uh, you're not going to be able to do it in Guilty Gear games. You're not going to be able to do this in, um, in uh, for example, uh, Marvel games and such like that, right? Now, um, oh, does Down Forward, Down, Down Forward work in Third Strike? Oh, someone actually says that it actually works. So, well, there you go. So code shortcuts do work in that game. But uh, what the shortcut is, as I mentioned, it's towards, down, down, towards, right? The shortcut, a lot of people have mistakenly uh, said it's down, forward, down, forward, plus punch. Uh, that's not actually the shortcut. If you do the shortcut all day, it'll never come out. It's not going to come out. The actual shortcut is down, forward, straight down, down, forward. So in other, words, in other words, the very first towards, the very first forward, can be a down forward. So essentially, if I'm crouching already, I can do like that. Uh, that's not very clean, so I can do like that. So there you see it. Down forward, down, down forward, and punch. That is the shortcut. So if I'm holding down forward, all I have to do is just do a small wiggle, and I can come out with an uppercut. This is actually really powerful. Um, there's a lot of things that you can get away with thanks to this. So for example, um, if I do the same thing I did last time, one, two, three, four, like that. Because of absolute guard, I can hold down forward and I'm not going to get hit. Because it's a true block string. So once I block the first one, as long as I hold down forward, I can keep blocking. And so now, in Street Fighter 4, I can mash at down forward without ever uh, standing up. So this, so the problem that I mentioned where you stand up like this and start getting hit isn't going to happen in Street Fighter 4. 
So I can just mash uppercuts. Ooh, I actually let go. But I can mash uppercuts like that just fine, and I'm never going to get hit. I'm never going to accidentally stand up. Shortcuts, really powerful, very potent stuff. And interestingly enough, a, a lot of people don't take advantage of them because they don't want to get messed up in other games. Because if you just learn to do uppercuts, you know, from really fast like this, this can be a problem. Um, it'll, it'll hurt you in other games. However, it is very useful, and I'll show you. There's actually one instance of shortcuts that I use all the time in Street Fighter IV because it's, it's a super valuable situation. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. I want to talk about some advanced uppercut techniques. Now, for the most part, in, in, in the case of, I would say, 90% of the uppercuts, in fact, um, probably even more than that, 95, 98% of the uppercuts, uh, you'll notice, so I just did a fierce uppercut. If I hit with my fist in that position, right there, where I'm just starting the uppercut like this, right? I do 160 damage. You saw that, right? So I did about 160 damage. However, if I hit him out of the air early, like that, you see that? I did 60 damage. Same button, same uppercut, but since I hit him with one of the later hits, I only did 60 damage. So it's actually really important to learn to hit people with that first animation when you want to anti-air them because it gets you the most damage, right? Even though doing an early uppercut might be kind of useful in some situations, you know, I mean, and a lot of people aren't going to react to it in time. They're just going to get hit. You want to do it as late as possible to get the maximum damage. So the first uh, advanced motion performance uh, technique there is is the button delay. Uh, one of the things about Street Fighter, of course, is that there are giant windows in which you can do your button press. So, for example, I talked about this a little bit, I think, uh, last episode when I was talking about the Tiger Knee motions. But I can do Fireball and Punch right away. Like, you can hear it, right? Or I can take a step forward. Do you see how I made Ryu take a step forward? So I can do the quarter circle forward motion, wait half a second, and then hit the button and still get the Fireball. Right? Boom. Like that. That actually becomes really valuable if you want to uppercut. Because I can uppercut right away like this, right? I can hit the button right away. Or I can do an uppercut wait and then uppercut. The reason why this becomes useful is because it allows me to crouch under jump attacks and still uppercut him as deeply as possible. See, that was an instant uppercut. So I'm going to uppercut instantly. 60 damage right there. Not good. But if I delay it a little, I can get that hit in like that. And see, watch. Let me, let me record Ken even doing something else here. I'm going to have him kick like that. Kick really early. So let's say I want to uppercut super late. Well, see, if you try to do a super late uppercut, you can actually just get kicked in the face before your uppercut comes out because of how, um, because of just the fact that it just hits low enough. This is especially uh, evident in characters like Sakura who have jumping roundhouses that hit really, really low. So what you want to do is just make sure you delay the uppercut because that way when you uppercut, you're crouching. So the kick will whiff. In fact, let me, let me just switch to Sakura so you guys get a better uh, image of this. Um, this is especially useful in games like Alpha 3. Uh, in Street Fighter Alpha 3, there's a lot of characters that have kicks that hit diagonally down. You've got um, Rose jumping shorts, Saddam jumping forward kicks and such like that. You get a lot of characters with very deeply hitting jump attacks. Uh, Karen's jumping short. So this delayed uppercut technique becomes very, very useful. So let's see what happens if she just plays back like this. Yeah, so you see how early that can hit me in the head? So if I want to do a deep uppercut, I'm just going to get kicked in the head like this, right? But you see how when I did that delayed one, I crouched under the jump roundhouse instead? That is really a very valuable tactic. And in fact, all Sagat players know this. This is probably one of the most important tactics to know for Sagat because he's just so damn tall. And so it's very easy to kick him in the head very early on. And in fact, um, that's a very legitimate strategy 
against Sagat. If you jump at Sagat and he did not commit to the fireball, kick early in your jump. Kick him as high up in the head as possible because you may kick him before he actually gets his uppercut out. Like that, right? So you're like, oh, he baited me, so I'm going to kick early and hit him before he uppercuts. But if Sagat knows to delay it, he's going to get you every single time, right? And that's a really, really important tactic, the delayed button press. Definitely take the time to learn that. Very, very valuable technique to make sure you get the maximum damage. And even if you have a character that, that has good damage on either side, the, obviously the other problem with doing it early is that. You get the trade. Now, obviously, this might not necessarily be a bad thing, depending on the character that you are, because with Sagat, you know, if I trade, woo, look at me, I get the, I get the stupid uppercut trade thing that Sagat has that I hate so much, right? So you can get that going, for example. Uh, well, if he was closer, it would have hit. But for the most part, you don't want to trade, because you don't want to be taking damage. You want to get as much damage as possible with your uppercut. Okay, so what's another good technique? Uh, performing an uppercut directly from crouching. Uh, this is basically like level... This is basically level two of uh, making sure you can get a deep uppercut. Um, in fact, uh, this is one of the execution corner questions that I just got. Uh, how to do an uppercut while crouching. Remember how I said... Um, it's really good to learn to do that little tiny circular motion to do an uppercut as opposed to rubbing it against the edge. Uh, this is the reason why. Because from crouching, it's much easier to do a little circle, almost a, a tiny little circle that goes from down forward to forward to neutral to down to down forward. Basically, that's what you're doing is a tiny little circle down there. And... Um, that is the best way to get an uppercut from crouching. Obviously, you see one of the problems is that you do have to go to towards. And what that ends up doing is it does stand you up a little bit. So if Ken does that early jump kick, there is a still a chance he'll kick me in that one little tiny instance that I stand up. So that is a, there is a little bit of weakness in that. Now, again, because this is Street Fighter 4 and in Cross Tekken, I, I can bypass that completely with the motion shortcuts just by holding down towards and going down back down towards and punch and that completely bypasses that so I can uppercut from crouching all day and uh, it makes it super easy um, but obviously this does not apply to most of the other fighting games so if you're an ST player if you're uh, playing any of the alpha games and you want to uppercut from crouching that is the best way to do it hold down forward on the controller do a tiny little circle right back to down towards, and then do the uppercut. That's the best way to do an uppercut from crouching. There's also a technique that I just made this name up right now. I called it crouch locking because basically what you're doing is locking yourself. So remember when I said I do this tiny little circle, I stand up for a second, he can kick me in the head? Well, you can actually make sure you don't do that by throwing out a very fast normal move like Sagat's crouching jab. If I throw out a crouching jab and then do that circle, I am not going to stand up because I am hiding the stand up in the, I'm hiding the standing in my crouch jab like that, right? So if you see them jump early enough, you can get a crouch jab out in time and then get the uppercut and you have no danger of standing up ever. This is a really advanced tactic that people have used before to avoid that early kick. And in fact, I've seen top. I know I've seen Sanford do this with Sagat before, um, trying to do that. And it's it's a really really good technique. However, the weakness of it is you have to know the uppercut is coming. I mean, you have to know the jump is coming. You just have to know the jump is coming. Because if you don't know the jump is coming and you try to react with this thing, it's, they're going to land and block and it's just going to be fine. So you have to predict this so that you have enough time to low to, to whiff your move while they're in the air before uh, they can land. Oh, Jesus Christ. You guys didn't see any of that, did you? Ah, oh, I need a stream producer so bad. So basically, that's an example right there of, do, of doing the crouch locking. See? It's really useful just to make sure that you don't upper, don't stand up by accident. So if I just try to do the tiny little uppercut one, 
I mean, like I said, it works pretty good, but there is a chance that he'll kick me in my one standing frame. Very hard to replicate here, but to avoid that chance altogether, might as well do a crouch locking, you know, a crouch locking technique here just by throwing out the low jab. And of course, like I said, you don't want to react to it because otherwise that's going to happen. And the computer, I mean, obviously he could have landed and blocked that in time. So you can't react with the crouch locking technique. Now let's talk about autocorrect uppercuts. Probably, uh, it's, it's a bane of a lot of people. A lot of people hate autocorrect uppercuts, but um, they're super valuable. They're great for stopping uh, cross-ups. And so, what exactly is an autocorrect uppercut, and how do they work? Um, again, I talked about the window, right? Remember how I was talking about the delayed uppercut that uh, keeps you crouching like this? So, because of that window, so for example, I can take a step before I throw a tiger, right? Um, the same thing goes for the uppercut. That's how I did that one technique where I got the... Um, where I can stay crouching to uppercut them to get maximum damage. Autocorrect uppercuts are essentially the exact same technique. What, what you're doing is you're doing the motion facing the way your character is facing, but then giving that little delay timing. And in that delay timing, before you push the button, the opponent crosses over your head. The game has already registered you as doing the motion for the uppercut. It read towards, down, down, towards. And then when the enemy passed over you, passes over you, you hit punch, you're going to uppercut. This is how you auto-correct an uppercut. So for example here, if I do this, and I jump over, if I do that same delay thing, right? Now watch, watch my commands here. I do it facing one direct. Oops, I didn't get him to jump over me. Sagat is too tall. I got him to jump over me, but now but look at the commands on the... Look at the commands on the screen. I did the entire uppercut facing the original direction, but because I delayed my button press, Sagat's going to turn around and uppercut. Oops, now I can't do it. Like that, right? This is particularly important for uh, knockdown situations. Uh, I'm not very familiar with Ken, so I don't know what his good cross-ups are. Probably like, okay, like that, right? So... Let's see what happens if I try to do an immediate uppercut. Oops. Huh, interesting. I think I did this cross up a little too good. Well, let me see this here. Okay. So if I did that right, what should happen is if I do a wake up uppercut, I should go the wrong direction. Let's see if I can get this to go. Okay. One more time, guys. Sorry, I I'm not as familiar with Ken. So... I want that to actually hit. Also, it doesn't help that I'm doing this against Sagat, who's just ridiculously tall. Um, so let's see what happens if I do a wake-up uppercut now. Yeah, see, there you go. I missed my uppercut, right? So this is actually one of the counters to an uppercut here. And if I don't do anything, I have to block, right? Or I get hit by the cross-up. However, if I time it so I do the uppercut motion and then wait, boom! Auto-correct uppercut. That's how I'm going to counter this tactic here. So if I do an immediate wake-up uppercut, I uppercut the wrong direction, I get hit, not going to work. But if I do an auto-correct, I will uppercut him on the other side. So you just have to learn that timing. Learn when to do the motion so that the opponent crosses over your head right there at that time. Uh, there is the cross-cut motion. This is uh, invented by John Choi. Um, this was a tactic that he used in a lot of other games. It's basically the same concept, but instead of delaying it... Um, because the window wasn't so large in a lot of other game, in a lot of the older games, you couldn't like delay it like I am here. So essentially, what the cross, w w essentially what the cross cut motion is here. Let me show you guys. Is instead of doing down uh, towards down down towards and waiting, you do towards down down back and punch. 
So what happens is you're hoping that when you're at the down position, that is the point in which the opponent crosses over your head. If he crosses over your head, then you've turned around and this becomes down towards. So you're doing it facing this way, forward, down, down, forward, and punch. So that's literally, you're, do, you're, you're turning around in the middle of your uppercut motion. So here, let me show you guys this. Jump over. Now watch my commands and let's see if I can do this. Boom. So you can see there the, the control motions that I did. Oops, let's try this one more time. Boom, right there. So you see the control motions right there. It's towards, uh, towards, then down forward, then down, then down, back. And I came out with the uppercut. That is another way to stop up, stop cross up, uh, cross up attempts with an uppercut. This is better in games with uh, smaller windows, but to be honest with you, do not do this uh, in Street Fighter 4. Try to use the delayed technique that I showed previous to that because it, it's much more effective. Um, this is another cross tech in Street Fighter 4 technique, the mashable uppercut. And this is the one time that I will do mash uppercuts because it's so important to have this ability here. And I'll show you uh, why it's so valuable. This is taking advantage of code shortcuts to the nth degree. Um, remember I said that the code shortcut for the uppercut is down towards, down, down towards. What also works as a shortcut is down forward, down back, down towards. So I can go all the way to down back and still get the shortcut to work. So watch, down towards, down back, down towards, right? Oops. Still uppercuts. So what makes this so valuable is it becomes, if you mash the controller like this in the three down positions, and this really helps on a TE stick because of the square gate, but if you mash back and forth, so hold down on the controller and wiggle down back and forth and hit kick, your uppercut's coming out no matter what. You see that? So I can hit kick anytime I want, and the uppercut is going to come out. This is a really, really powerful mash technique. And the reason why this is really powerful is because of characters like Seth, who can do... Oh, which side am I going to be on, right? So there is a Seth combo right there where he can get you mixed up in the corner like that. And so here's what's going to happen here. I have just recorded him to cross me up, right? I've recorded him to cross me up on that, on that sequence. Watch me. I'm going to wiggle on this and just mash the buttons. And I got a reversal uppercut. And hit him from that side, right? Let's do this again, shall we? I'm going to record Seth again one more time. Oops. Wrong buttons. And I'm going to tap... Ooh, I messed that up. And I'm going to fake it and attack from the front side. Well, guess what's going to happen? Oops. I need to get him further into the corner. Get into the corner. Now I'm going to do this wiggle mash uppercut again. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what side he ends up on. It's a way to blow up the left-right mix-up. That mashable uppercut is such a powerful tool to blow up a lot of those kind of situations. Um, other characters had very similar stuff. Like, I know Cammy had has one too, but uh, there's a lot of situations where a character hits you out of the air, and right when you're about to land, they're under you, and they can choose left or right. The, the Street Fighter shortcut mashable uppercut, very good way to blow up either side. So the last, um, oh, is that the last one that I had? Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about uppercuts and combos. So um, to do uppercuts and combos. So uh, I'll be right back, guys.
All right, welcome back, guys, to First Attack. I'm talking about uppercuts, and uh, to be honest with you, I didn't think it was going to take this long to talk about a lot of this stuff, so I actually have enough... Co I've only gone through half of my slides, so uh, I'm going to break this up into two weeks. Uh, next week, I will talk about the rest of it, uh, probably a little bit more higher-level concepts when it comes to uppercuts. So right now, what I'm going to do is finish um, uppercuts and combos real quick. Let me see something really quick, actually. Hang on, guys. Uh, let's see here. Six. Actually, you know what? I might just save this for next week because this is exactly halfway through my slides. This uppercut and combos is exactly halfway through my slides. So, yeah, I am going to save this for next week then uh, and continue next week with that. But what I am going to do here, the reason why I'm stopping a little bit early right now um, and we can go and we can finish this next week is because uh, last week I did a little bit of first attack execution corner stuff and one of the things that I ended on was uh, doing uh, Fuerte's run stop loop fierce and um, I promised that I would talk about it a little bit more and help people understand how to do it and uh, I just tried it at the end of the episode. I was just trying it, and um, I didn't explain what I was learning from it. And so for the guys that asked me in the email how to do run-stop-fierce loops, uh, this is basically makeup now. Uh, this is making up for not explaining it last time. So let's get the game footage up here. Here we go. So I have El Fuerte now. So uh, one thing I want to mention, what somebody talked to me about, is it's actually much easier to do run-stop-fierce loops after a jump attack first. And the reason why is, well, look at the reel that Ryu has if I hit him with just a fierce. See how he does that thing where he leans back really far? Um, that, that reel animation causes so many problems in the run-stop-fierce loop. But I think if you do... Uh, jump fierce into stand fierce. It's always the same loop, I think it is. Oh no, it's not. He got knocked back there anyway. Alright, well, someone told me that Ryu is very hard uh, to do the, com do the combo against Ryu, so I'm going to switch it to somebody else. Does anybody know which one is a good character to do run stop fierce on, so you don't have to worry about this extra stuff? Like, who's a character that's really good to beat up on with, uh, with the run stop fierce? I'm just going to beat up on Fei Long just because uh, I like beating up on Fei Long. Is Fei Long good or is Fei Long bad? Oh, people are saying Kami is actually really good on, huh? Okay, I'll try Kami. Kami and Abel. Let me see. Let's see. No, it's two. Okay. Okay, there it goes. Okay, there it is. So three. Right there, right? So... Um, what am I, what was I trying to learn when I was doing this combo last time? Well, I talk about rhythm all the time when it comes to execution, right? The timing, the bop, 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 timing, stuff like that, right? So, the one thing I wanted to learn right away was how fast can I run and stop? And, uh, the trick that I'm doing is, if you notice, I'm using all three buttons for the run, stop, fierce loop. It's the best way to do it. So hit fierce, run with strong, and hit jab to stop. So hard punch, run with medium punch, light punch to stop. And the reason why this is such a good sequence is you've assigned what every button is for. So it's very easy to keep track of what you're trying to do by doing this, right? And another thing is that it lets you wrap your fingers like this. Um, this is a little bit harder on a pad. On a Mad Cat's pad, it's pretty easy if you play claw style. Um, but on an actual pad like this, run, stop, fierce is going to be very, very hard to do. I'm wondering how many people have uh, who can actually do um, run stop fierce on a on like a traditional Xbox or PlayStation pad. I'd be really curious. But so what I tried to figure out, what I want to practice first is uh, see. It's easy to run stop, right? So okay, that's too fast. I did the two buttons too fast. Run stop too fast. So I'm gonna slow it down a little bit and see. I get an instant run stop. Listen, listen to the button timing, guys. Can you hear? Can you hear the button presses? So that's a good timing. This was too fast. See, I don't stop. 
So practice this first. Practice a run stop like this, right? Now what you want to do is practice fierce run stop. And what you'll find out now is that you try to do that same timing that you just did. So, oops, I don't stop. I don't stop for some reason. Why is that happening? And this is because of hit freeze. When I hit him with the standing fierce, the game swallows a bunch of time. It just, you freeze in the hit position. So what ends up happening is if you do run stop, you're actually running during the hit freeze. So because the game pauses for a second, you're going to run later than what you actually thought you were going to run. So hitting the light punch actually comes out too early now. So what you want to do is delay the run and stop as much as possible so that you can use the same timing like that. So you can hear it. So I can do this. Listen to the button presses and I can get the run. Right? But I can also do this timing. Whoops. I can do this timing. Can you hear how that's a little slower? Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cancel it at the end of the run, at the end of the hit stun. By canceling it at the end of the hit stun, I can use the same timing that I knew. So now what I want to do is memorize the timing between the fierce and the strong. So you hear pop, 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 pop. Instead of pop, pop, I'm doing pop, 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 pop. And that's what's going to help me make sure that I can run and stop as fast as I can. Like that. Here's another thing uh, to note is that when I do stop, how fast can I fierce, right? So what I'm going to do is run, stop, fierce. Didn't combo. Didn't combo. Now the interesting thing is when you stop, Fuerte comes to a stop almost immediately and you can do a move almost right away. See, look at that. Right? So I can basically stop and run. So what I'm actually doing is I'm almost plinking jab into fierce. It's not quite, which is plink timing, that's tra, right? I'm actually doing a... But you can hear how, can you hear that? It's really fast. It's really fast. And that makes sure that I come out with the fierce as fast as possible. And that's what's going to let me do the two reps of it. So now I'm learning that the timing is ba 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 ba. So you hear, whoops. I don't know if you guys can hear this again, but do you hear that? Ba ba ba. Actually, it's four button presses. It's ba 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 ba. Right? So now I can pretty much consistently do two. Right? Bop, 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 bop. Bop, 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 bop. There you go. So now I can do two. Now I just have to make sure that I can transition the second fierce that I'm doing from the run stop into the same thing. Right? But what you'll find out here, and this is what people told me in the chat last week, is that if you try to do this, he comes out with far fears, so now I can't do it anymore. So what gives? And what people actually told me is you want to let him run a little bit longer. Because he needs to close distance. And so now what I have to do is practice letting him run just a little longer and still doing that almost piano timing on the fierce and making sure I can still get it to combo. So now I'm letting him run a little further and I'm still getting the two hits. So when I was talking early on when I wanted to stop the run as fast as possible, that actually turns out to be wrong. So what I'm doing now is letting him run a little further, like so. So the key really is the light punch into the heavy punch as fast as possible. And now if you can get that timing part down, then you can do this. See, I'm not letting him run fast enough. Far enough. There it is. Let him run far enough. There it oops, almost had it. Almost had it. Oops. <laughs> Here's another tip about combos. I'm gonna just tell you guys this right now. If you sit there and try a combo for like 30 minutes and you're having trouble doing it, stop. 
stop, 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 stop doing the combo. Your hands start to just, your brain just starts to fry. And I've had this happen to me a lot of times where just for some reason my fingers stop obeying what I want to do. I can't get the combo out anymore. I'll go and do a different combo or I'll just walk away from the game and give yourself time to rest and let things sink into your brain and you'll come back and all of a sudden everything works great. Oops. See, I'm not letting him run far enough. See, there you go. And if you find yourself when you run too far and it's still not comboing, that probably means you're just not actually doing the stand fierce fast enough after the run stop. So you really got to learn that quick wrap timing with the uh, jab, with the stop into the fierce. Oof, I'm getting so close every time. There it is. So there you go. So that's how it works with the run stop fierce. Um, that's the best way. And um, what do you talk a razor? Uh, what do you mean by uh, what does what apply to any every to any other character or just forte? Um, but uh, oh, this this trick method. You mean like? Um, uh, the the walking away thing, or just using the timing that I'm talking about. <laughs> I really want to try this now. Uh, any form of this method, yeah. Uh, um. Well, I didn't see a follow-up question from Razor. Ah! Yes, I got it. Haha. <laughs> That's what I really wanted to do. <laughs> I told you guys, I can do combos all day. I can do combos all day. But uh, in any case, uh, for, the, for the guy who asked me that question on uh, how to do Run Stop Fierce, I hope that helps a lot. I hope that kind of uh, shows a little bit of the techniques that I use to figure out what it is that I'm doing um, to, to, to figure out combos. A lot of the times we sit there and we try to do combos all day, we can't get it to work, and we just think our execution is not good enough. The truth really is there's a lot of very subtle things that you can figure out about a combo to get it to work. Combos work, and there's a reason why people can do them consistently, and it's not necessarily just because they have amazing finger dexterity. It's because they understand something about the combo engine that you're not understanding. So uh, there you go. Uh, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to let uh, David come on in just a little bit. Probably start at around 9.30, level 3 focus. He's gonna be. Are you still talking about uh, character matchups and stuff? Yes. Yes, so he'll still be talking about character matchups and stuff. So, again, if you guys do have more Execution Corner questions, please send them to ultrachentv at gmail.com. If you have any Ask Jay Chenzor questions, please send them there. I, will, I, I, I love combos, and honestly, I'm cheating. I'm, I'm asking you guys to let me sit here in training mode uh, on stream so you guys can watch me do training mode because I, I'm a training mode fiend, man. I just sit there and I do training mode for hours and hours and hours. Do the same combo for hours on end. I love that. And um, I'm just basically tricking you guys into giving me stuff to do so I can just stream that and have fun at the same time. So, <laughs> But uh, definitely send me more stuff. I, I, again, I love breaking down combos. I love trying to help people with this stuff. So uh, that's about it. I will see you guys tomorrow for the Tuesday show. And uh, stick around for level 3 focus. Peace out, everybody.